Hi, my name is Jan Hendrik Herold and I'm the lead vehicle science engineer for the Tag Heuer Porsche Formula E team. And today we zoom in on the energy management of Formula E. Energy management in Formula E is very special because in Formula E we're actually not limited in energy per lap as in other racing series, but just the whole energy per race is limited and we cannot run the full energy like flat out without saving. But it allows a lot of different strategies like you can save in the beginning or in the very end and like this racing becomes very uh, thrilling. In a Formula E race, we're limited to 52 kilowatt hours, and of course, we always target to use the maximum available energy. And to put that into context, this is roughly as much as two people in Germany use within one week of electrical energy. In the end, our powertrain components consist of everything that comes after the battery. So the battery is spec, um, so it's the same for all teams and everything that comes downstream between battery and wheels is developed by us and we call it the powertrain. In the end, it consists of the electrical inverter, the e-machine, a gearbox and a differential, and obviously the dry shafts to put the torque to the wheels. And at the same time, we have cooling components uh, to cool our own components. Our engineers work closely together with the ANSYS simulation engineers to ensure we extract the absolute maximum of the 99X electric powertrain. We cannot actually change the physical hardware during the season, but we can develop the software completely as we want. It's completely free and it's a huge field of development, obviously, for us. During the race, we can use the e-motor as a um, generator, so we can basically invert the way it's working as Usually it's converting electrical energy into mechanical energy. In braking, we can invert that circle and recuperate the mechanical energy into electrical energy. This is what we do, obviously, mostly during braking in a race. We could actually finish a race without recuperation, but we'd be dreadfully slow. If you want to be competitive, you have to have recuperation. In the past, we lost energy from regulations for every minute of Fuku's yellow or safety car. In the next season, which is upcoming, we will actually not lose energy, but instead we will have to race longer. So for every minute we run under Fuku's yellow, we'll have to race additional time after the usual 45 minutes. This has a rather big impact on our strategy as the um, lap target may change the laps you can run within the given time. In season eight, uh, the power levels we can race with will increase. So in race, we will have 220 kilowatt instead of 200, as in season seven, and also the tech mode power will increase. Higher power means we deploy the energy faster. So as we have to still stick to the 52 kilowatt hours total in a race, the energy will simply be deployed quicker. So the sailing time gets longer. I think racing will get closer because the liftoff point will be more crucial to hit. The energy management in Formula E, we define it up front before the race weekend. But then when it comes to racing, a lot of different factors impact the actual strategy. So it's always a mixture between uh, the engineers defining the optimal strategy up front and then the other engineers reacting to the circumstances on track. As soon as we know the track layout of the next race, we basically start simulating energy strategies in offline simulation where we predefine our profiles, we then take them to the simulator and refine them with the driver to make sure they're drivable and achievable and also the driver can adapt to various energy levels. In free practice sessions, we validate our predefined energy strategies, which we've uh, refined on the simulator. And then the qualifying the result obviously has a big impact on the final race strategy. In the race, you have to have a, a broad tool set of energy strategies to make sure you can react flexibly to upcoming situations, like if you're stuck in traffic behind another car, or if you want to build a gap on another car, we prepare all these strategies up front and put them up our sleeves.